Hi, well, here we are again, uh, Canadian Independent Media, with myself, Ed Johnson, and Jack Etkin, with the uh, latest news for you to peruse. Uh, the first story will be by Jack about the people who run our country who are totally out of control. And uh, so take it away, Jack. The people who run our country are totally out of control now and totally crazy. They are deliberately creating homelessness as one example of the way they operate while putting into their own pockets everything that isn't nailed down. They've put millions of Canadians deeply into debt just to pay for a home to live in. In this richest of all countries, people have to work harder and harder just to keep a roof over their heads. And, of course, we have to work harder to pay for the super wealth of the super rich. And this is not by accident. This is the plan. They want to take everything they can, and they want to impoverish everyone else, and they're doing it. The people who run our country care nothing for the people who live here. They just want us to do the work and keep out of their way. Canada's housing policy seems to be this. Why should we sell people a home for $100,000 when we can sell them the same home for $300,000? And why should Canadians have a health care system that works for us? Our rulers don't want that. They want a private system that will maximize their profit. And so they have deliberately wrecked our health care system and stolen billions of dollars from it and made people suffer and die just so they could take every last penny they can. Can you guess where the money is going here? And things are even worse on the environmental front. Here in British Columbia, the oil and gas folks have built illegal dams to capture water for their poisonous fracking operations. This has gone on for years, kept hidden from the public by a corrupt media and corrupt politicians who all work for the 1% of the 1%. Over in Alberta, the province has been massively poisoned by the tar sands. It will take thousands of years for them to recover. Meanwhile, the logging corporations have destroyed our forests from coast to coast to coast with no concern for anything except their own profit and greed. And the smart meters they put on all our homes are causing fires, but no one cares. And now this from the COP23 meeting in Germany in November of 2017. And here's British Columbia laying no charges after one of the biggest environmental disasters in Canadian history. And here is Justin Trudeau betraying us yet again. The common denominator in all of this is that the corporations and the 1% of the 1% own our media and they control our politicians and they control our governments. This loss of our democracy is our most fundamental problem. We have to fix this up and create some democracy in Canada and take control of our own futures. It seems increasingly clear that our politicians and governments work for someone else. But if we can start to make them work for us, then imagine how much better things could be. As a departure from our regular programming schedule, I'd like to read an excerpt from an article from wakingtime.com by a staff writer, which goes as follows. The state power is historically abusive. The manipulation of our money supply endless wars and a wasting of public resources, corruption, permitting the destruction of the natural world, terrorizing citizens with abusive police and punitive tax codes, and limiting prosperity with regulatory overkill are all the standard operating procedure for the state. If politics is the arena of government, and government is clearly influenced by corporate interests, intelligence agencies, and deep state operators and supranational organizations, then it makes no sense to pretend that we have power in the political system. It makes no sense to pretend as though politicians are acting in the true interests of actual people. It makes no sense to pretend that we can save ourselves by calling on members of the state to represent us in their corrupt scene. The politically awakened understand that the plots against humanity extend way beyond the political scene. In a status world, the awakening individual is tasked with the challenge of seeing through all of this 
in order to free the mind and see the greater possibilities for freedom and cooperation in the human story. Unity is the one thing that any political elite has always feared the most. Falling into the trap of politically dogmatic and ideological divisiveness is more dangerous to our society than just about anything else. Today is November 19th. Remembrance Day was a week ago. On Remembrance Day, we should always remember that corporate America funded Adolf Hitler and the Nazis to get them started and bring them to power in Germany and start World War II. One of the Nazi funders was Standard Oil, now Exxon, which is ESSO here in Canada. The fact that some of the wealthiest and most powerful people in the United States funded the Nazis to bring them to power shows exactly what they are capable of doing. These are the kinds of games they play in order to keep their wealth and power. If we always remember that corporate America supported Hitler's wars in the past, then it might be more difficult for them to trick us into more wars here in the present today. All the wars that are now destroying the Middle East are based on the attack of 9-11. And even though millions of people don't believe the official story, it doesn't matter. The wars never stop. And there were no weapons of mass destruction in Iraq. But more than a million innocent people were murdered by the U.S. War of Terror there. And yet, our Canadian media and our politicians continue to pretend that our side are the good guys. They're not. The people who run the West seem to want war. Thousands of American soldiers died in the wars over there, while hundreds of thousands more became sick. And the people who run the United States don't care for one second about any of them. Canada's corporate-owned media always honor the dead on Remembrance Day. But the real story of the Canadian soldiers in World War I, and all wars, who died by the thousands, is that mostly they were murdered by the capitalists and politicians of the day who put them in a completely unnecessary war where hundreds of thousands of young men from all sides died over patches of land that meant nothing to them. 61,000 Canadian dead in World War I, 170,000 wounded, tens of thousands more returned home broken in mind and body. All the millions of young men in all the armies on all the sides dying for the profit and lunacy of those who run the world, and they're still doing it to us today. Today we're all fighting ISIS, but a lot of people say the, the people who control the United States created ISIS. It sounds ridiculous to say that the United States is funding ISIS. But if the people who ran the United States in the past funded Hitler and the Nazis, and they did, then of course they would fund ISIS too, if it suited their purposes. It's funny that we aren't taught these kinds of things in our schools. But of course, much truth is not allowed to be spoken in our schools or anywhere else. Maybe it's time we stopped believing what our leaders tell us. Maybe it's time we replaced our leaders with leaders who at least try to work for us. Maybe it's time we Canadians gained more control over our own lives and our own futures. The corporations and their media and their politicians, even as they lie us into the next wars, they pretend to care for those they murdered in the last wars. Thanks for watching this week's Canadian Independent Media. Thank you.